I'm Lindsay with Free Tours by Foot, and I'm here to talk to you about a lesser known aspect of the Lincoln assassination, and that is the very controversial Lincoln conspirator, Mary Surratt. By the time the Civil War rolls around, Mary Surratt, who grew up in Southern Prince George's County, is living in a tavern that her husband had built about 10 miles south of the city as a way to earn uh, income for her family. Her husband has passed, and her three children are scattered about going to school or fighting in the war, and she has found herself in a heap load of debt from her uh, deceased husband. So she finally makes the very bold decision to rent out the tavern to a less than reputable tavern keeper, a man named John Lloyd, and she moves herself, her daughter Anna, and her younger son, John Surratt Jr., up to a property that they own in D.C. on 8th Street. Uh, once they move inside, she turns it into a boarding house to hopefully earn more income for her family. And this is where things start to kind of go downhill. She opens up the boarding house, people move in, she is making money, so all is well on that front. Except uh, some very odd people start showing up at her door. One of which will be a very skeevy, uh, alcoholic German man from Southern Maryland, who we will later find out is conspirator George Atzerott. He will only be allowed to stay at the boarding house for a few days before Mary kicks him out. We will then have a visit from a very young, good-looking man claiming to be a Baptist preacher. Uh, he'll stay for a few days and then leave. And then another very handsome young man who looks a lot like the Baptist preacher uh, will move in. Only his name this time is Mr. Wood, and he has a mustache. However, he goes up the stairs with the mustache, comes back down without it. Um, before he will leave, and we will later find out that that is fellow conspirator Lewis Powell. But probably most interesting of all is there will start to be very frequent knocks on the door at the H Street boarding house by none other than John Wilkes Booth. And every time he stops by, he asks to have a word with John Surratt Jr., who at this time is suspected by the United States government as acting as a Confederate spy which is highly substantiated that he is. Now, according to Mary, all of these comings and goings of these very suspicious people is not concerning to her at all. As far as she's concerned, they are paying customers and whatever business they have under her roof is not her personal business. But then things start getting stranger when on the day of April 14th, 1865, John Wilkes Booth makes one more stop at the boarding house with a request. He asks that Mary deliver a package down to her uh, tavern in Surrattsville that he promises he will pick up later. So she asks a friend of John Jr.'s and fellow boarder to escort her down to the tavern, which is about a two hour uh, ride for transportation in those days. And not only does she drop off the package, but she also gives Lloyd a message and she says, Keep those shooting irons ready. Someone will be calling for them tonight. Now, what is she talking about? She is supposedly, if she did indeed say this, referencing two rifles that were hidden in the walls of the tavern about a month previous to the assassination when the initial kidnapping scheme of President Lincoln failed. So she warns Lloyd of this, gets back in the carriage, and heads back up to D.C. Now, the night of the assassination, she will be questioned by authorities because they are looking for John Surratt Jr., a known associate of John Wilkes Booth. He is nowhere to be found. She says that he's been out of town for a while. He is in Canada, but she has no proof that he's actually there. So they leave it at that. But a couple days later, they decide to go back to search the boarding house one more time. And this time they have the intention of arresting her to bring her in for questioning. So she and her daughter Anna and the other boarders have been kept in the parlor while the boarding house is getting ransacked again. And this time there's a knock at the door. And in walks a very strangely dressed young man in a very nice suit, shiny new riding boots. Except he's covered in mud, he has a giant pickaxe over his shoulder, and a shirt sleeve on his head instead of a hat. And he claims that he is a day laborer that Mary has hired to dig a gutter for her and he's just stopping by to see what time she wants him to come. Well, Mary takes a 
good look at him, swear she's never seen him before, let alone hired him to do anything, and he will be arrested along with her and the rest of the boarders. Now, after they've been arrested, a witness will come to look at everyone that's been brought in, and he will positively identify the man with the pickaxe, the day laborer, as none other than Lewis Powell. If you want to find out what happens to Mary, Lewis, and everyone else, please stay connected to us on uh, all social media and find out the rest of the story.